Hey guys, MVC here for the Scan Pro Gaming Tab for another video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair Sabre Optical featuring a 3988 near flawless optical grade gaming sensor with DPI of up to 6400 in a right handed claw grip that can also be palmed ergonomic shape design depending of course on your hand size because beyond a certain point your fingers will go over the edge which you know is both a good and bad thing as typically buttons are easier to press at the end but what we're going to do is have a look at an overview of the mouse the box the feature set how it looks up close jump into some driver overview and then have a look at in-game performance and come back right at the end with my final thoughts feelings and conclusions as to whether this could potentially be a mouse for you and if it's suitable for competitive gaming so yeah without further ado let's go ahead just jump right in the Corsair Gaming Sabre Optical RGB mouse is a right-handed ergonomic design mouse with claw and fingertip users in mind. It's extremely small at 124 millimeters in length, 80 millimeters in width, however closer to 65 at the grip position given the side slope outwards toward the bottom and just 38 millimeters in height. So it's not really advisable to try and palm grip the mouse, but if you do have small hands, you may get away with it. Now the coating on the mouse is a soft touch rubber coated finish. So gonna be quite slippy for those of you with non-sweaty palms however given its claw and fingertip in mind it shouldn't be an issue when we are palm gripping mice we like to see stronger indentations on the side as a result now we have eight programmable buttons all of which are rebindable in the Corsair utility engine which will also update the firmware if you need to do that now in terms of button switches mouse one and two definitely best described as hypersensitive great for its intended claw and fingertip grip as you're going to be able to double tap effectively and there is a crisp click there however if you've got heavy fingers and you attempt to palm grip this mouse at first you may find you accidentally click them but it's something you can get used to after the adjustment period mouse four and five are definitely some of the best i felt on the market and in terms of the mouse wheel very like to push down with a crisp click and notches that are not too well defined so even if you scroll through weapons on mouse wheel you're going to be more than satisfied here there too next we also have four zone rgb lighting the front left of which is dedicated to your dpi selection now in terms of dpi it's using the s3988 optical grade gaming sensor we have dpi of up to 6400 in increments of 50 all of which are native so broadening we have a good implementation of it we should be getting an extremely responsive sensor that is present in a lot of other top gaming mice on the market. Now one of the big pushes with this mouse is that despite all of its features they managed to pack them in and weigh just 100 grams. Now this is going to be really good if you use a lower sensitivity and play for extended periods or you want to try and reduce the risk of repetitive strain injury otherwise known as RSI but as always with any mouse regardless of its weight make sure you take regular breaks between your sessions. So finally underneath the mouse we can find extra large PTFE mouse feet and a 1.8 meter braided cable and by default we get a two-year warranty with the mouse so moving into the software Corsair Utility Engine CUE as always I recommend you head up Corsair Gaming website download the latest software and firmware just so you're up to date from the get-go and you don't run into any issues that may have already been ironed out since launch but if you install and don't get the prompt go to settings and then here under device you can update the firmware and as you can see we're running one millisecond response time i.e. polling rate with the latest 1.19 firmware but CUE is very daunting at first it's very complicated there's so much you can do the functionality here is insane particularly if you've got a keyboard as well you can tie everything together in terms of macros timers dpi shifts even lighting effects and as you can see here we've got a rainbow color i personally haven't set anything up to work between the two just yet but the functionality is here if you want to get involved and there's a lot of profiles available on the corsair gaming forums which i definitely recommend that you check out but if you go back into assignment and then click on the mouse, this is what you're greeted with. And to give you a quick rundown without going into too much detail, here are your profiles. Here you can create and delete, and you can also save profile to device memory. One of them, which will stay persistent regardless of the PCs you're on. And both the mouse and keyboard will share one profile but in each profile you can create various modes in these modes you can have different dpi levels based on your shift buttons you can also have different macros timers dpi whatever you want so it's important just to bear in mind the difference here between these two but 
under assignment you can see here we've got all our button bindings right now I've got play and pause selected to this one this will play and pause Spotify which if we go to settings and in the program right here we can see we've got it selected as the media player you can also check out a number of things here such as prevent it starting on system startup why would you do that if you're using a keyboard or mouse from Corsair you can also demo the on-screen display which will show things like timers and stuff like that it's kind of neat something to play around with you can back up and recover your profiles neat and you can share them with other people as well uh, and here you can create our lighting and actions our different macros and different lighting effects that you can add on and we'll get into that later on I haven't created any yet but you can do it now under profiles here under assignments we've got all our bindings like I say actions list down here I have to keep moving this up here unfortunately but next tab along is performance all our different DPI levels important point to note here is the 3988 optical sensor in every optical mask that I've tried featuring it runs about 50 DPI faster than any other optical mask that I've used so the Logitech G402 and the Razer Death Adder 3.5G to name just two so as you can see running 1550 as opposed to 1600 750 as opposed to 800 and 350 as opposed to 400 so if you converting DPIs take that into account if you don't have a tape measure handy but as you can see we've set the default DPI to 1550 if you want you can select independent X and Y sensitivity you might be questioning why you could do that well actually in the Unreal Engine it's by that by default essentially if you're trying to aim at heads or playing a game where people don't rocky jump into the sky you don't really need to move up and down as much as you need to move left and right so having independent XY is definitely a possibility and with that you can also enable and disable angle snapping which if you try and draw a straight line it's going to be a whole lot easier with angle snapping essentially if you do a diagonal it's going to try and pull it down not a sharp diagonal but a slight diagonal so that can be useful some people frown upon it it was a feature in old MX518 from Logitech an original 3G DAF adder since it has been removed from most mice but it isn't until the 3310 and 3988 that we're starting to see a return of it it would have been nice to have more control a power of angle snapping maybe depending on how much diagonal you do but you know having just a checkbox is better than nothing we've also got lift height here this can be useful particularly if you've got a pattern mouse pad if you've got a pattern mouse pad and it was forced to low lift off distance like some sensors like a 3090 you have to force it in firmware rather than allow it to be customizable then what can happen is as you go over different colors it can stop tracking so you may need to increase this based on the mouse you pad you have but again it's great that it's here I personally use a setting of middle even though low works flawlessly on this mouse pad which is the Corsair MM200. Another top here, we've got enhanced pointer position and our pointer speed. Just leave these at default. You can also change these to the control panel. You don't want enhanced pointer position and you don't want to change this, which is 6 of 11 in Windows. And if you use raw input in games, it's going to ignore this anyway. Uh, finally, our last tab is lighting. Our button here is our DPI shift. If we right click and edit light we can set different DPI's so at the moment as you can see we've got white blue and purple purple is 400 blue is 800 and white is what I use default at 1600 if you try and change it by using this it's not going to allow you to do it but our other three zones are front of the mouse and our top two you can change by here or you can right click it and again full RGB I think it's 16.8 million colors could be wrong there but as you can see purple and blue at the front which makes a nice little pattern on the front of the mouse pad I guess here we've got a lighting effect list again if we were to go into actions and lighting we can create new lighting effects that will appear here and uh, that's pretty much it to be honest we can clone modes to other profiles and uh, if you want to share with other people you can import and export and upload them to the Corsair gaming forums like other people have done you can also download people's profiles and check out their lighting effects something to definitely do but like I said I've not set these two up to work in tandem with each other that's something I definitely considered doing but since we've only got four zones here we've got an entire keyboard of RGB lighting uh, I'm kind of happy just manually setting these as I want maybe I'd add a breathing effect that's as much as I would do but yeah overall extremely satisfied the only thing I would add is maybe a power of angle snapping feature apart from that everything else taking full advantage of the 3988 sensor so without further ado let's move into some acceleration tests some button debounce tests and actual gameplay thoughts before my final thoughts at the end. 
So our first port of call is to show a lack of acceleration inherent to the S3988 sensor as implemented here on the Sabre optical. Now I go for the optical variant over the laser because typically there's inherent positive and negative acceleration in consistent amount that cannot be completely disabled in drivers on laser variants. So with an optical, it essentially means if I move my mouse, let's say 10 centimeters across the mouse pad, it doesn't matter how fast or how slow I move it, I'm always gonna end up in the same place in game. So I can tune my muscle memory to learn those flick shots or I can add my preferred amount of acceleration afterwards and learn it that way without worrying about anything already there on the sensor. So here with the optical we're going to align our mouse on the edge of the pad along this wall and move it from the left to the right of our Corsair MM200 XL pad until it stops tracking at a slowish speed. And as you can see, we end up just to the right of this. Now, bearing in mind human error, I'm not a machine even though I like to think I am sometimes when aiming in this game, we're going to move it quick and as you can see, about here again, and once more, just for science, again, about here. So we're ending up in the same place, showing a lack of acceleration, meaning not only can I learn flick shots, but if I want to add my preferred amount, for example, CL mouse acceleration, let's say 0.002, really low amount, and do sensitivity 0.3, we now can get slow movement, and we get acceleration if you want to do fast turns. Obviously, you can increase it or decrease it, whatever you want. But either way, assuming you move at X speed, you're always going to end up in the same place with acceleration now without worrying about anything already there. So, yeah, exactly where you want it to be from an acceleration perspective. And, yeah, no complaints to how Corsair have put it in, I guess, to the mouse. So recently I've been reading various forums about how certain gaming mice geared toward the competitive gamer have had higher debounce times on the mouse 1 and 2 buttons. And essentially, a higher debounce time would mean there's going to be a period of time between button actuation before the next is registered. And this can be a problem if you use mouse 1 to fire and mouse 2 to jump and you attempt to do a full height rocket jump in Quake Live or here in Tube Mania if you attempt to do the variable jump, which is press and hold a little bit to do a high jump, tap to do a small jump and press and hold for a long period of time to float back down. So essentially what we're going to do is grab the mouse with our left hand and then simply spam the right hand mouse button a number of times and see if we do the mini jump. If we do, we know it should be fine in Quake Live and here in Shoot Mania for the variable jump. So as you can see, mini jumps are perfectly fine, which means we're not only going to be okay here in Shoot Mania, but also in Quake Live when it comes to those max height rocket jumps like on campgrounds from Red Armor to Bridge or on Blood Run from Lower Yellow to Shotgun. So how is actual gameplay with a Corsair Sabre Optical RGB? Well, kind of a mixed bag, and to be honest, as expected. Because again, I have to highlight the importance of personal preference when it comes to a shape and comfort level of a gaming mouse. For me, palm gripping the mouse, it was a little on the smaller side as mentioned before, and the right lip did annoy me to start off with. However, after the period of about a day or so, casually playing H1Z1 and then moving slowly into some Quake 3 aim and free, I did find myself a natural grip that was comfortable lifting the mouse, but again, never really 100%, and it's not something I'd probably swap to all of the time. However, if you claw or fingertip the mouse, that 100 gram lightweightness of the mouse really comes into effect and throwing the mouse was not fatiguing whatsoever over time and I had no trouble doing micro adjustments or large adjustments with the mouse weight in mind. So with that said, providing you adapt uh, your sensitivity based on the 50 dpi difference that seems to be found on the 3988, you're probably going to fall right at home with the mouse sensor responsiveness, no trouble tracking enemy directional changes in Quake 3, and on testing the mouse in the notice, which can't be guaranteed to be 100% accurate, but still we gained a respectable 4.98 meters per second on a Corsair MM200 mouse pad and SteelSeries QCK Heavy. So more than enough tracking speed there regardless of the sensitivity you use. In terms of button response, initially I was a little bit worried that I'd accidentally activate mouse 1 and mouse 2 because they are hypersensitive. However, I never run into such issue when gaming, but still, if it was a larger product, I'd like to see them be a little bit stiffer just to prevent the people that might have those heavier fingers when it comes to resting them on the mouse. But if there were to put the internals of this mouse into another shape, like the M30, more toward my liking, I'd probably use it. I see no reason why I wouldn't. Particularly the mouse wheel and side buttons are just fantastic. And again, the button response times and everything else are exactly where I'd like them to be. So for me, just came down to personal preference. But without going too much into final thoughts, let's go over there now. So final thoughts for the Corsa Sabre RGB optical gaming mouse featuring that 3988 sensor. It's near flawless in performance. 
The sensor feels responsive. You've got a lot of features on there to enable and disable angle snapping, although I would like more control over the power of snapping that is enabled when you check that box. Maybe you can set it in increments of one to 10, like on the ROG Gladius. You've got lift off distance control, DPI level control of increments of 50, all of which are native. And to be honest, there's very little I dislike about the performance of the mouse itself. The mouse wheel especially is something that I can't see anybody disliking. And that's usually a factor that some people will either like or dislike. It's not too light, it's not too heavy, the notches are there, but not too well defined that it's annoying to scroll through. Um, the side buttons are great as well. I don't know what switches they've used, but they really feel great. One of the better side buttons I've ever used on any mouse. Um, the only, I guess, complaint you could possibly have is if you're a palm grip player, it is potentially too small. And for me, it was too small. It's not my shape. It's not something I would personally use myself moving forward. I much prefer the shape of the M30 that they have, the Raptor range of Corsair products, rather than the Sabre Optical Corsair Gaming range and M65 Corsair Gaming range. So. I'd like to see the M30 upgraded in the future for my personal preference, but if you've got medium to smaller size hands, you will still probably be able to palm grip this mouse, but medium to large, definitely too small, both in length and probably height. I think height is the main culprit here. Height in combination with the sides sloping outwards. If the sides didn't slope outwards, I don't think this finger right here would rest on the edge, which is the problem for me. And that's why I personally will not use this mouse myself. But in terms of performance, particularly if you're a claw or fingertip grip user, this is very light and has everything you could want in a competitive gaming mouse. Particularly if you look at the control you get over the Corsair Utility Engine. If you've got a, say for example, a K70 RGB keyboard, tying those two together in terms of lighting effects, macros, timers, DPI levels and shifts, functionality like that, it really is one of the most feature-fledged sort of peripherals you can get on the market in terms of mouse, keyboard, everything else. So it's something to check out if you're in the market and you think the shape will suit you, that's for sure. And I guess that's all I really can say. It's not a mouse for me in terms of the shape, but everything else is there that I'd use. And uh, yeah. Uh, that is pretty much what we're going to end on, I think. So thank you for watching, guys. Any questions or comments, just add them below. I will get back to you. But for now, we'll catch you next time here on the Scampo Gaming Tab.